Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do this kind of spinning, sparkling, cool stuff. Alright, let's get started. So, first off, we need to make the, let's see, visual effects graph. Mm. And we add it to the scene. So here we have the default setup, like so. So if we go into it, <clears throat> the first thing I just want to do is to um, make sure that these coordinates are as I want it. So in these bounds, you see the center. That's what I want to be the center of the system. And also you see the size. I want it to be this big, so if I go like this, this box is inside the view, which means it will render. So I just want it that big, all right. And also, as a start, we won't have any uh, velocity. I will remove that one. And yeah, that starts from there. So here we see the particles. They are in the center and we're going to make a circle. So we're going to use um, sine and cosine for that. So we're going to have sine and cosine. And we're going to have a vector three. That's going to be our position. Like so. And we're going to pl plug this into set position. And we're going to give some more space, easier to work. All right. So set position and we plug it in there. Okay, so uh, we're going to have a random number per particle. And we're going to have that radiant inside sine and cosine. And also, we're going to have uh, <clears throat> here, we're going to have from zero to full circle. That will be 2 pi. So now we have it as a circle. We're going to have more particles in our system. So I'm going to make 100,000 in the spawn system and I'm gonna have 10,000 in the initialized particle. Also gonna change the particle texture to this um, default and also it's gonna decrease size in time and start much smaller, like do something like that. All right, so we actually don't see everything when we look from the above, but we do it like so for now. Actually, we're going to change the color as well. So I actually made a preset here. Um, It's going to start uh, light blue and become like magenta in the end. You will see it soon enough. So let's see. Uh, we have the random who has the random number between 0 and 2 pi for each particle per particle. And we put it into sine and cosine. And we have our circle. <clears throat> Uh, so now let's uh, focus on the velocity. So we're going to have, um, well, actually, we're going to add an offset first. So we're going to, at the very end, we're going to put a vector to just uh, offset the circle. So we're going to put it a little bit above, like so. All right, 
So we're gonna fix the velocity. So we need to set veloc velocity like so. So if we take this one in here, I don't know why this is, but if I do constant per particle, this works, otherwise it won't. Um, it's supposed to mean that it's the same random number if you seed uh, the same input. So each particle will have the same output here if you do it constant. But if I don't have constant, it, I don't know why it do like this. Anywho. <clears throat> um, so, but anywho, the, the center has a direction to the particle. And this direction adds to the particle. So that's why they are shooting away from the inner circle. So what we're going to do now, we're actually going to um, just see how it is like now i'm going to show you how i'm going to calculate the vel uh, velocity so let's say like this that we have the um, we, ha we have a center of this um, circular circle right we have, um, let's say we take these three points. These points have a um, direction from the center. So if we look like this, this, this one has um, from the center this direction. The same go with this one. So they all got this direction, right? And also, we're going to add, with the cross product, we need two vectors that we're going to use to make the third vector. So you see, this um, game object has its forward direction in this way, right? Also, these points will read the same vector. So when, when we have these two vectors, we use the cross product. So we get this third uh, vector that will add force along the circle around like this. So again, we will have a spinning thing. So that's nice. So, so let's go back. So what we, so we have this uh, vector, the position, we're gonna normalize it. And we also need an extra, ve extra vector. That's been, gonna be one in Z. So it's gonna be the Z direction forward. So you can see here the blue arrow is the object forward as well and we're just gonna make a cross product so set velocity if we use the direction from the position we get this but if we add this one we get it's going along with the circle like this super nice and also we're gonna add so we can multiply the strength so if we add this multiplier here we can just make it super strong 
All right, so let's add some gravity in the update. A little bit too strong, I would say. Let's we we'll keep that for now. We're gonna add a drag, linear drag. It will make sense. And we also gonna have a um, collision for the floor. So if we change the gravity, it won't uh, drag it down so hard. Let's say something like this. And we also change the linear drag a little bit less. That looks nice. So it's very smooth and kind of uniform. So we're gonna So we're gonna add some noise to make it a little bit more interesting. Well, first off, you see it's very, very, very thin like this. So we're gonna add some uh, thickness to it. So when we create the, create the position here, you see in the Z it's super flat because we doesn't add anything to the Z. So first off, if we make a float, that's gonna represent the thickness and uh, we do a random number again. So then we do uh, per particle. For each particle, we do a random uh, value between 0 and 0 0.2. And we just plug it into to the set like this. And now you see we have the thickness. And we could actually do this like a really long tube if we want it like this. But we're gonna keep it as 0 0.2 at the moment like this. <clears throat> we're also gonna add some this stuff to the... Um, Alright, let's turn off the velocity and the gravity at the moment. Because you see here it's super thin, right? And we're gonna add that. So we need to give some space here. And we do add. And we're also gonna have this random number as well. Actually, let me show you one thing first. So first we do the add like this. And then we take this random number and add it to first the i. So you see the, there are some kind of thickness, right? But it's skewed like this. And also if we plug that one into the x, we get the... Um, this is a skewed weird thing. <clears throat> we don't want that. We actually need a random number for each uh, vector value. So now you see we have this is the x, this is the i, and this is the z. But we can control it with the same float. So here you see now we have this thick. So that's nice. So if we now add back some velocity and also the gravity, <clears throat> we have a little bit more random things happening, a little bit nicer to look at. Mm, you see it a little bit thicker, that's nice, but we're actually going to add some velocity to this as well. So we're going to have it in the update, we're going to do add velocity we're gonna have a noise actually when we pick noise we're gonna pick the pearly noise 3d 
And if we plug this noise in here, you see there's stuff going on, right? So what's happening is that um, each particle get the same kind of noise value. That's because the noise is reading from zero, zero, zero. So first off, we um, there are three things we're gonna do. First, we're gonna get position. So we get the current position from the point. So you see there's new stuff happening. Still very strong though. So we need to multiply the noise. with 0 0.01 and now you see it's much more appropriate to our setup you can see it, it's uh, going and using the same noise pattern it's giving a really cool effect maybe you want it then you can just keep it as it is but um, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna change the noise by time so it won't have this same flow area all the time so we're gonna make add to the position, we're gonna add a time, the total VFX time like this, so. Now you see it's kind of updating the noise. This is getting more interesting. And the noise is uh, kind of big, so we're gonna have it more detailed by dragging up the frequency like this. And also here, now we can choose to, um, if we make the set velocity a little bit stronger, and we can also take the drag and make that a little bit stronger. And also, I think I wanna have it less, uh, Lifespan is between 0 0.75 maybe to 1.5. Actually, I'm gonna lower this to a drag coefficient to two, something like this. All right, so this looks pretty nice. I think I'm gonna lower the noise even more. Or actually, it was pretty good as it was. So, and the last thing, we're going to just tweak the particle itself a little bit. So the particles are round at the moment. But um, <clears throat> the direction the particles are going, that's the velocity. So I'm going to change the scale of the particle to be scaled along the velocity. So by doing multiply scale and we do them in the i direction that's going to be the direction with the velocity let's do it times 20 first so you can see it properly you see it's actually not really following any direction now but if we take the face camera plane and change it to a long velocity now you see it's starting to follow uh, the velocity and I'm going to change this to 4 I think 4 is more appropriate yeah and here you got it alright I hope you liked it thank you for watching